Do you think Fleetwood Mac is a fast food sandwich? I'll bet you believe that Bananarama is the name of an adult movie. Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> Greetings, hustlers. Slip on your leg warmers and pop open a wine cooler because today we're going to find out how much you know about 80s music. When we're done, you can post your score in the comments and whine or complain or brag. You ready, you super freak? All right, let's go. Question one, which 1980s pop star wrote hit songs under the pseudonyms Jamie Starr, Joey Coco, and Alexander Nevermind? By the way, Prince's song Darling Nikki inspired those warning labels on explicit music. That really seemed to clean things up. Right, Nicki Minaj? You are Nicki Minaj's biggest fan. Question two, Betty Davis Eyes singer Kim Carnes had her first top 10 hit in 1980 with which music legend? Kenny Rogers' more famous duet partner was Dolly Parton. The pair claimed they never hooked up. She said it would have been, quote, like incest. Question three, which 1983 smash included the line, together we can take it to the end of the line, your love is like a shadow on me all of the time. The original title of Total Eclipse of the Heart was Vampires in Love. Honestly, that wouldn't have sucked. Question four, Weird Al Yankovic's 1983 hit Another One Rides the Bus was a parody of which group song? Another one bites the dust is sometimes used to train people to perform CPR, since following its beat gives you the right number of chest compressions. Fascinating. Question five, which of these bands did not perform at Live Aid in 1985? Live Aid inspired a bunch of other charity concerts, including Farm Aid, Band Aid, Self Aid, Sport Aid, and you're going to think I'm making this up, here in Aid? Question six, which of these Michael Jackson songs was his first number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 during the 1980s? Believe it or not, Rock With You was first offered to Karen Carpenter. Yeah, that would have been... Interesting. Question seven. Who was not one of the five original VJs when MTV debuted in 1981? The VJs weren't exactly household names early on. At launch, MTV could only be seen in New Jersey on one cable system. Question 8. George Michael's I Want Your Sex was the third single from the soundtrack of which 1987 movie? Another song on the Beverly Hills Cop 2 soundtrack was nominated for an Oscar. I Want Your Sex won a Razzie Award for Worst Song. Question 9. Which of these 80s music legends was the only one to sing on We Are the World? No Madonna, no Prince, no Sting, uh, but Dan Aykroyd was there. It's Saturday! Yeah, the conehead guy from Saturday Night Live sang on We Are the World. Question 10. Which two music legends recorded a duet in the 1980s that wasn't released until 2014? Reportedly, Michael Jackson would bring his pet llama to the recording studio, and Freddie Mercury wasn't a fan. Imagine that. We're halfway there. How you doing so far? Oh, sorry to hear that. Do better in the second half and I'll take you to Blockbuster. In the meantime, check out our Trivia Hustlers merch. We've got coffee mugs, t-shirts, and hoodies. You can find the link in the comments. Question 11. In 1983, which band had five top 20 hit singles from three separate albums? It didn't hurt that Princess Diana named Duran Duran her favorite band. If you didn't know, she was kind of popular. Question 12. Which of these Madonna hits was not written by the Material Girl? Question 
Like a Virgin has been heard in countless movies and TV shows. On Grey's Anatomy, Sandra O's oh character hummed the song while cutting open cadavers. Like a virgin. Question 13. Which 80s pop star won a Tony Award in 2013 for composing the Broadway musical Kinky Boots? Cindy Lauper has won a Tony, an Emmy, and a Grammy. No Oscar yet, and no world wrestling titles either. Look it up, kids. It'll all make sense. Question 14. Which Guns N' Roses single was the group's only song to hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100? Fans obviously love Sweet Child O' Mine. A guitarist Slash, not so much. He said the song, quote, makes me sick. Question 15, which of these artists did not record a theme song for a 1980s James Bond film? The Eurythmics may not have recorded a Bond theme, but I think Annie Lennox would have made a great Bond villain. Question 16, which Motown singer wrote the 1980 hit Lady for Kenny Rogers? Lady isn't exactly the most creative name for a song. Styx, Lenny Kravitz, Supertramp, and Little River Band, among others, have all released songs with the same name. Question 17, which of these 80s hits was not written by Prince? Prince songs were also recorded by Celine Dion, Alicia Keys, Shaka Khan, Sheena Easton, Sheila E. I think I'm sensing a pattern here. Question 18. The first video played when MTV debuted was Video Killed the Radio Star by The Buggles. The second video was by what artist? Female artists like Pat Benatar were a mainstay of early MTV. Black artists? Not so much. Question 19. Kenny Loggins is considered the king of 80s movie soundtracks. Which song earned him an Academy Award nomination? A few years later, Loggins released an album called Return to Pooh Corner. It was for the kids. Question 20, which 1983 single became the only police song to hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100? Sting said he wrote the song in a half hour. It was the best-selling song of 1983 and won the Grammy for Song of the Year. Not bad for a creepy ballad about stalking and obsession. There you have it, 20 questions about 80s music. How'd you do? Oh, well, I guess now we know what it sounds like when doves cry. Be sure to post your scores in the comments. Or don't. It's your prerogative. And if you're feeling lucky, lover boy, check out one of our other trivia videos. And show your dad you're a winner, like Millie Vanilli. See you next time on Trivia Hustlers. <laughs>